Okay, good. Right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, take a big brush and I'm just going to wet the complete surface. Uh, the paper I'm using here, by the way, is, as I said, watercolour paper um, and it's just taped down with um, framing tape. And this piece on the side here, oh, you can't actually see it now, so it's out of shot, so it doesn't really matter, but there's an extra piece on the side because the paper was a bit too large, so I've just taped out um, a small area, but that doesn't really matter. So just wetting all of the, um, <clears throat> the whole board, all the way over. So plenty of, um, plenty of water. Uh, I've got a slight tilt on the board, not too steep, maybe about um, five degrees or so, five, 10 degrees. There's a slight tilt just to help the paint kind of move a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so first color then um, is going to be uh, a sort of a yellowy golden color. So I'm going to use some um, like quinacrinone type gold, or if you don't have that, then you could just use like um, a bit of yellow with a tiny, tiny bit of brown in it. Not too strong, because I don't want it too dark. Obviously, we're going to be working into this. Let's go a little bit yellowier. Chocolate ones. Sorry, Stuart, could you repeat the colours? I got distracted. Yep, so it's um, quinacrinone gold, or if you don't have that, then you just use like a cadmium yellow with a tiny little bit of brown in it. Okay, so here we go then. So I'm just going to start to slosh this on into my sky. Got my spray bottle to hand so we can just move it around. Just want to keep it really soft. A bit more yellow up here. We'll let the yellows kind of creep down into the headland a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to have plenty of um, yellowy, yellowy orangey colours. So slightly stronger yellow now, slightly more on the orange side as I'm coming down into the into these rocks. So these rocks have got a bit of oranginess to them. So we're going to bring some of that in. Just let that move around. Give it, again, give it a bit of a spray. Keep it really soft. Wash a bit of that out. Touch more orange down in here. Perhaps down towards the beach, it's a bit orangey. Or sandy, I should say, sandy colours. We'll let that all work itself in. Okay, we'll let that just move and do what it wants to do. Okay, now next colour. I'm going to clean my brush out and then dip into some um, cerulean blue. And a tiny bit of cobalt. So cerulean blue and cobalt together. Have you thickened the paint up, Stu? A little bit, yeah, it's a little bit thicker. Right. Um, so I'm going to start to bring this now into, but it's still wet, so it should theoretically not be too much of a problem. So I'm just going to bring some of that in and again, give it a little spray. Okay, let that bleed. Not too bothered about the um, things all merging together, because remember, we're going to be redefining shapes with the acrylic. So 
it really doesn't matter if all these shapes kind of merge and bleed together. And in actual fact, you do want a bit of that because you want it to be really soft to give the feeling of it being in the distance. So we'll just continue that across the headland. And again, I'll give that another little spray. Okay. And then we'll have a bit more blue, I think, out into the sea. And this time I'm going to put a, maybe no, I shouldn't need to green it too much, got a bit of yellow in there. So let's just leave it the same blue as I've just been using. Just work that across the head, the, um, the horizon. Bring it in a few strokes towards these rocks, a bit towards the, um, the beach. Not too much, just a bit. Down by these rocks here. Okay. And when you're doing, um, obviously when you're in this area doing this, try and give the stroke some perspective. Give it um, going up towards the right. Don't do it flat, okay, up towards the right. Otherwise they'll, um, the water won't feel like it's on a beach kind of coming towards you. Okay, now um, let's bring in some, uh, I'm gonna bring a bit of purple now. There's some purpley notes in the, in the rocks. Let's try and get a clean bit of purple, that's filthy. Let's squeeze some out. The lid. So some purples now. And obviously purple and yellow go quite nicely together. And obviously when we bring our um, our darker colours into this, this should work out quite quite nicely. So I'm just going to splosh some of this on in different places, not too worried about the exact position of it. I just want it to be fairly random. So we'll let that run. A bit more down in this corner, I think. It's not in the reference, it's quite light down here, but I want it a bit darker, I think. A few darker bits here, perhaps a bit in these rocks. Coming down there, up up the rock face, because this is all going to be very dark when we get to it. What purple is that, Stu? Um, this is a Daniel. Uh, this is a blah, 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 white knight, and it is. Um, can't even read it. Quinacridone purple. Quin oh, it's quite a bright one. Okay. Yeah, quite a strong bright purple. Yeah. So maybe a little bit more there, and then we'll have some of this also in our rocks. Now I'm going to be a little bit careful here because obviously this is going to bleed, um, which is fine, but um, I don't want it to bleed too aggressively. So I'm just going to put it in at the top and just let it creep down slowly. A bit on this one over here. A few marks. Give that a blast. Okay, wash that brush out. Now I might just get a pipette with some water in it. I'm just going to wash a bit of this out through here. Just some water. Which again will give us some nice run marks. Uh, maybe we'll have a little bit in there. So intentionally cauliflowering really, um, where all of this should, well it might not cauliflower too badly, it will just give me some variation in the um, in the wash. So um, I might turn it, let's, let's dry that off. 
I'm just mopping up the excess water at the bottom here. Just mop that up. And then I'm just gonna give it a little bit of angle. So I'm gonna turn it like so and run just a touch more water through this area, which is obviously the sort of the beach. And obviously the way we got like the, perhaps some waves or something like that. Okay, that's enough water. So let's let that just trickle, trickle over. And obviously it's going to cauliflower in the rock, but I don't really mind because a lot of that's going to get painted over. Lose the water off my easel, got it everywhere. Okay. So now then, I'm just going to dry up the edges just so that um, it doesn't bleed back too badly. What I might even do, while it's still nice and wet, is actually put in a slight more stronger yellow. I'm gonna take some neat um, cadmium yellow, so fairly, fairly strong. and bring a bit of that into this rock up here while it's still wet, just to really give us a nice strong bit of yellow that will just bleed into the other colors that are already here without um, having to do too much work. So we'll bring that down the rock face a bit. And perhaps we'll bring it up this way, sort of the cliff cliff area, down the cliff face there, there's a little bit in here, a few spots. And then again, fairly strong, fairly neat. Bring a bit down into this foreground area. <clears throat> and even at this early stage, we can think about some flicks I can try my rigger. So, and I know it will bleed, but it's all just added texture. So it's going to add to the later on effect. So I'll just do that. Take a little bit of water in my pipette, just to get that to bleed into the colors that are already here. It's not so strong. Okay. And then yellow wise, I think we're nearly there. Um, I'm not going to put any in this rock, even though there is a little bit up there. I'm going to make up a color in acrylic probably for that. Um, yeah, okay, and then we need a bit for the beach. I'm going to mix some of the orange into that and a bit of brown. Orange and a bit of brown to make a sort of a sandy colour. Which I can then again bring in to this foreground area. So here's the rocks there. So let's just start to bring some of this in and we'll let it bleed down with some water. A bit more yellow in there. Perhaps a bit up here, the sandy colors. few spots in the rocks. Mm 
Okay. And then a tiny bit of the purple again. I'm going to put a bit of yellow in the purple. So it browns up slightly. So it's the same purple as I've just put on, but with a bit of yellow in it. And then we've got this sort of reflective darker area under this rock, which we're going to do more work on, but this is just to give us a bit of a bleed along the water line. So a few marks there to the shadow. Shadow is going to be very dark. Okay. Oh, if I can get it open, I'll not get it all over me. <laughs> a little bit of um, white acrylic is what I've put out first. I'm going to put out some um, raw sienna, so the um, yellowy raw sienna. Okay, so a bit of that. And we're going to have some um, some cerulean and some cobalt blue. So pretty much the same, very similar colours to we've just used in the watercolour. Not too dissimilar. So cerulean blue and cobalt blue. Okay, so first things first is to mix up some colour for the sky. Okay, so we're going to go back into the sky a little bit and add some um, some some colour notes. What I don't want to do is I don't want to lose all of this nice softness, but we are going to need to bring some some stronger marks in for like the clouds or um, um, some darker shapes. So let's give this a go then. So I'm going to take some um, some white and mix up a fairly light bluey grey. Uh, sorry, not bluey grey. Um, sort of a bluey colour. Let's do that. A bit of white. Take some of the um, cobalt. Cobalt blue. So just white and a bit of cobalt blue to start off with. Stuart, could you use ultramarine instead? Yeah, of course you can, yeah. Yeah, of course I'm, you can. I'm yeah. limited on my... Colors. Yeah, ultramarine will be a little bit warmer, but it's not too dissimilar to, um, to cobalt. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So I'm just going to bring some marks of this now into over the top of my watercolour and start to bring the headland out so that we can actually bring the headland a bit darker. So a little bit stronger in that blue to touch stronger Stuart, dark. Yeah. Do we have to do we have to use a flat brush like that? Uh, you don't have to, but it will help if you want to get some of this oh, sort okay. of textural um mark making um okay you don't have to use a flat brush you can you know but it will help with this sort of um, mark making all right okay yeah thank you uh, let's bring another mark up this way and obviously because this is on watercolor paper i'm getting some quite nice breaks in the paint which is quite interesting so now let's mix up a darker blue, so the cobalt blue again, and some white, and this is now for the um, for the actual headland itself. So this tone needs to be pretty close to the tone I've just put on for the sky, but just a teeny bit darker. So I'm going to bring that down like so. Might be a little bit too dark, but we'll see in a bit. I have to go a touch lighter with it. So we're coming across and then again, we can come down. Perhaps coming in a bit. Start to shape up the rocks that are in front of the um, uh, the headland. So a bit more white now into that into that blue. 
And the other thing I'm going to need is a tiny bit of red. So I'm going to put out a teensy bit of crimson. A tiny bit of um, crimson into this mix. Just to go slightly purpley. So this rock actually needs to come in a bit there. And then the top of it can come down. Come a bit lighter again. As we're coming down to the water. So just bringing that in. Bring a few of those lighter marks up the rock itself. Okay, then back to our blues. So cobalt blue. So I'm going to bring this ridge sort of line which sort of comes down the um, the rock face it kind of comes down towards the water towards the water so we'll bring this down like so it goes up a bit there all the way down to the water line Okay, now I need to clean my brush. And I'm going to dip into some of the um, sienna and the white. And into that I'll put a tiny bit of the blue, the cobalt blue. Might need a bit more of a stronger yellow. I'm going to get a stronger yellow out one second. So I've just got a bit of cadmium yellow as well out, which is a bit more punchy. The um, skin is a bit too dull. Needs to have a little bit more colour to it. <clears throat> I'm going to put a bit of yellow or that yellow into the mix. Might be all right. We'll try this colour first. I might need to go a bit duller. So I'll bring a few notes of this up into the rock. Just tickle some of that in. Down into the rock at the bottom. We've got some of that. On these rocks and some of it coming up. The, um, the rock face over here. my brush out again. Okay, now I need a very fairly light version of the blue now, bluey, bluey colours. So I'm going to put a bit of cerulean in there as well. It's a bit of the cobalt, the blue, oh sorry, the cobalt blue and a bit of cerulean and some white. We can actually start to bring the end in of the headland. Might make mine a little bit lighter than he has because I'm not sure he's actually used watercolour in his. Fairly soft 
down towards the water edge. So you can just drag the brush fairly lightly over the top here, just to give me some very light marks. Bring some of that similar color, a bit lighter into the sky. Uh, white. Just lay some marks in there. A bit more white again. So we're letting now some of the watercolour show through these acrylic -y marks. So I need to keep it fairly light in the acrylic um, so that it doesn't overpower the those lighter watercolour marks showing through. Let's bring a little bit of that to the edge of the headlands. A few marks up in the sky here in the watercolour, leaving some of that nice watercolour glow in these yellowy orangey colours, which is quite nice. Let's just scrape a bit across there. Okay. Now back to darker. So more of the cobalt blue tiny little bit of the crimson. So we're coming in to establish this darker part of the sky cloud, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Just bring that down there so the headland is a bit stronger and then we'll lighten it off again and I'm going to bring it up darker here can even bring a few little brushy marks down into the the rocks just to break it up a bit more blue so it's very blue this headland lots of blue Bit more white. I'm just going to finish off blocking in this end piece as it kind of meanders down. A bit darker. Slightly more purpley. down towards these rocks. So you can actually drag that back up off the beach, which is there somewhere, back to that rock face. <clears throat> Another bit of that purple in here as well, just to lose that bit of white. And a tiny bit of it just up here, just to finish off the, um, the actual shape of the headland. We might need to bring some other colors into it, but I think that's fine for the moment. So now let's turn our attention to the water. Do you want a few minutes to catch up on that? Is everybody all right? 
Yes, please. Yeah, okay, I'll give you a few moments on that then. Give me the supper coffee. Get some clean water while I'm waiting. Right, you okay for me to carry on? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of um, watercolour. And by the way, I'm using different sets of brushes here. So I've got one set for watercolour and I've got one set for my acrylics that I'm using. So I'm not using the same brushes for um, both mediums. Okay, so just be careful of that. So this is just a little bit of um, yellow watercolour that I put on here. And I'm just going to start to pick out some of these a little bit brighter greeny grassy colours um, that we've got in our landscape. Sorry, is that, is that acrylic or watercolour? No, this is just straight watercolour. Right, okay. Um, using it fairly neat. Um, it's really just to detail up just a tiny bit in these rocks and places. Perhaps the odd flick back in there as well, not too strong. Because obviously right back here, we don't want it too bright. Just a little bit of color will be fine. Now, I'm gonna go into um, establish, I was gonna go into the water, but I think first of all, I'm gonna establish these core rocks because I think that's quite an important area to get into because they're part of the darkest part of the painting so if this is too dark in comparison to everything else it will tell me once I've got these in. So what I'm going to do um, for this is I'm going to start it off with watercolour and if I can't get what I want I'm going to then go into acrylics. So I'm going to actually wet half the rock so I'm going to bring some water halfway up the rock, like so. And I'm going to do this foreground rock first. I'm not wetting this one, I'm just doing the foreground rock. Bring that water down towards the, um, the sea area. And then it kind of comes out and then we're into 
um, what, what looks like the shadow or the reflection, shadow slash reflection of the, the rock itself. And that comes all the way across to this darker piece of cliff. Um, there, okay. So now we're gonna take some, um, some black and possibly on my brush, I might put a teeny bit of blue with that. So black and blue. So remember the top is dry and the bottom is, um, the bottom is wet. So now I'm gonna to start to detail up using a very dry brush technique. So this is paint thick, very little water in it. Um, but obviously where it hits the area where there is water, you see it will just bleed. Okay, I'm just gonna tilt that down just a little bit more. Much more blue. And this is only on the wet part, is it, Stuart? So the, this is on dry at the moment. Oh, that's this on the bit, dry at the so, top of the rock. So here is wet, yeah. here is dry, okay? So the yeah. paintbrush has um, got very little water in it. Okay. And I'm just putting the paint on fairly thick. And again, this is watercolor, not, not um, acrylic. So and then where it, where it hits the water bit, it's going to bleed. You see it just uh, bleeding? Okay, yeah. Okay. So that just keeps yeah. it nice and soft in that area. But on the top, I want it fairly crisp. Okay. So then I can actually start to bring this. Oh my God. Fairly, fairly strong down. Um, kind of comes out a little bit there. A little bit more water. So I'm going to tease that, tease that down now. So this is, I'm just using water here now, just to pull, pull the color that I've put on out into the shadow area. And that's going to go a lot bluer and purplier. So a bluey purple shadow. And that comes across towards this cliff um, or rock face, whatever you want to call it. Actually, it'll go up a little bit higher there as well. Let's take a little bit of cerulean blue, bring some of that into there, and a bit of purple. Let's bring that down. Maybe it juts out a little bit more. Probably need to bring some other colors into it once. Once that's dry, but that's fine for the moment. And then while we're at it, let's continue that across with some more purple. So this is just neat purple. The same purple we used right at the beginning. Um, and I'm actually gonna then start to bring that and mix those colors together. Let's bring a bit up into the rock itself. And then actually just start to get some movement into the brush. So very dry, as I said, in the, um, in the paint. Might even hold the brush on its side just to get the paint to come off slightly thicker, uh, slightly more broken. Put a bit more cerulean in that. Okay, coming across, then I'll start to detail up a little bit of this far rock. This one's not quite as dark, so I'm not going to go as strong in this one. 
So I'm going to put a little bit more water into the into the paint. Still onto dry paper. So this rock kind of comes down. A bit more blue, I think. Behind there. In that part of the rock. It's a lot bluier, bluier purple, this rock. And again, we might need to add some stronger marks into that later, but that's fine. Fine for the minute. Bring some so really any marks into the shadow. Perhaps to indicate you know, some odd rocks sticking up here and there. Okay, so moving on then, let's now do this far little rock. And he's gonna be very similar actually to the one we've just done. Um, so what I'm doing by the way with the watercolor is I'm actually knocking off a lot of the paint onto some tissue so that the brush is a lot drier when I'm putting it down on, you see where it's, it's not so wet, um, putting it down onto the onto the paper so I don't get so much paint come off and then I can just sort of scrub it into the area that I want um, to keep it lighter. So that's sort of what I'm doing. You might not be able to see off camera. Um, let's come a bit stronger on this rock here and again let's give him a little bit of shadow. There, slightly bluer again. Okay, and then we'll bring some bluey marks just to link it all together up into that already painted acrylic bit. So this is just watercolour over the top of acrylic at the moment. Okay, do you need a few minutes on that now? Do then will be to um, start to develop this area in here, make it a bit stronger. So again, I will try it with some watercolour first and then if I need to go deeper, I'll put some, um, uh, some acrylic over the top. <clears throat> So I'm again going to use a fairly dry brush technique and I'm going to dip into some, um, some blacks and purples. So a bit of black and some purple together. So it's quite a dark, a dark mixture, fairly, fairly um, dry, not completely dry, there's a little bit of moisture in there. Okay. So using the side of the brush, so I'm actually holding the brush uh, this way and I'm going to be using it so that the belly of the brush uh, makes the most contact with the, um, the paper. And then I'm just going to start to bring some of this and I'm trying to skim the brush over the paper so it's not too, uh, too heavy. Just trying to give the impression that we've got some um, marks, broken marks. So perhaps a bit of dark, a few dark marks in there. Perhaps a little bit of line just at the top. So coming down the rock face, we're into, so this is, I'm trying to indicate this as being a sort of vertical type uh, 
structure. So now as I'm going into more say, a diagonal sloped area, I'm going to angle the brush now and start to make my strokes go this way. So this was going vertical. This is now going slightly more angled just to give the gesture of the mark um, in a, uh, a sloped fashion. So a bit more purple in the brush. So again, again, can come up the hill, go across, uh, can come down a bit, fill all that in. A bit more purple and black, maybe a touch of blue, a touch of cerulean in there as well. So coming down in towards the sort of beach area. A bit more cerulean. So we've got this sort of striation in the rock kind of there. <clears throat> a bit more black. And we've got sort of grasses over here. So let's pull some of these marks that way, more purple. Break it up a bit. <clears throat> Just gonna clean my brush off. It's getting a little bit too much black in there. Just some neat purple and a bit of blue together. So coming down now into this sort of bolded area, which is jutting out into the, um, <clears throat> onto the beach. So I can bring some of these marks. A bit more, I'm gonna drop to a slightly smaller brush and <clears throat> into some cleaner purple and a bit of blue. It's fairly, fairly blue. And bring these drier brush marks down to our beach line. Then we've got these sort of rocks that are on the, on the bottom of the cliff face. So we can just put some of those in. Might give this a little squirt at the bottom here. Just to get it to bleed a little bit. Perhaps a little bit of that just in there as well, just to get it moving. A touch. More blue, cobalt blue. At the bottom of this um, sort of grassy area. Pretty, pretty neat blue there. more blue bits. Okay, and then coming across now into this big boulder on the right hand side, oh sorry, the left hand side, back again into my black. And I'm gonna do the same thing as we did uh, at the beginning, just a little bit of moisture Ideally with a clean brush. This is a bit dirty, this brush, but never mind. Take my dark blacky purpley colours. Just give it some shape. A little bit of spray.
for that rock to bleed down. Bring some blues in. More black. Make it nice and strong. Clean off the brush. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to let that dry. So I'm going to give that a dry off. So that's now good and dry. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring some color, some acrylic color into my C. And for that, I'm going to use some white, some of the cobalt blue. And into that, I'm going to put a tiny little bit of the yellow, uh, the cadmium yellow. just to green it very, very slightly. A bit darker. So now, let's just see how dark this is. It should be about right. So I'm gonna use this to indicate some of the water up against my rocks and drag the brush. I'm not trying to really work the paint into the surface. I'm just dragging the brush to give me some broken broken marks. And then I can actually use this color to cut into my, my rock. Let's drag that this way. Let's bring a little bit of that color down in between the rocks. Touch more there and there. Can have a little bit of that color creeping through the back here. Okay, and then up to my horizon. bring some of those marks and just tidy up the bottom of this headland. Let's go slightly more yellow again, a bit more blue, just to make it a tiny bit deeper. Again, I'm going to drag that across with a nice broken brush mark. So I get some of the texture of the paper showing through. 
And as I'm doing this, I'm gradually angling the mark so that it starts to go up um, and it's not flat. So let's just cut in the top of this rock. And then a few marks in there. A bit more blue. So we've actually got um, some stronger type blues in here where I think there's a wave breaking. Just a little bit stronger back, back there. And then we can bring some of this darker colour across the foreground. And up. Bring that out a little bit more. Okay, so that's the, let's just knock that down a bit. <clears throat> So now let's clean my brush. And then I think I'm going to use a little bit of um, um, acrylic just in the foreground here now, just to strengthen up some of these colors. So I'm gonna dip into some neat yellow, acrylic yellow. and a tiny bit of white in it, not too much, more yellow than it is white. White really is just to make it a bit more opaque. So then into these areas, I'm gonna bring in this yellow over the top of the watercolor. I can have an odd bit of grass, just using this chisel brush to make some marks for grasses over the top of these rocks. A bit more in here, perhaps there's some grasses just growing off the edge of this rocky area as they do. more in here. Obviously the orangey kind of yellows will work quite nicely against the blues. We utilize some of that. Drag a bit of this into here. Raw sienna, i.e. the sandy colours for the beach. Bit of white in it. Bring some vertical type marks down into the beach area. Just a bit more watery there. If you carve into the rock here as well. Clean the 
brush off again. Now a very light purpley lilac colour now in the acrylic. So white again, <clears throat> tiny bit of crimson. And the teeniest bit of cerulean to make a very light lilac colour. So I'll just very quickly put some of this on in the foreground in the beach. A little bit in the water. Can actually have a little bit in this rock. Striations in the rock. <clears throat> Perhaps there's a teeny bit on one of these rock faces up here. A little bit actually maybe even in the in the sky. <clears throat> Bring some into this rock here as well. <clears throat> actually change the shape of the rock if you don't like the watercolour shape. Bring the water, you know, the acrylic into it. Now very, very light blue for the foam. <coughs> so we'll bring some strong gestural marks this way where we might be getting some foam patterns. And then that'll do us a little bit up there. Perhaps a tiny bit along the headland. Okay, and that will do for today, I think. Well, 